Hi, I'm Frank Martin. In a previous video, I show how you can play Atmos music on uh, Apple Music and uh, on the Mac with my setup. So it got me thinking, how do I produce something with Dolby Atmos? So here is a video, a little bit what I found out and uh, how to do it. So first you can go to the uh, Dolby Atmos site and uh, you can get all the tools that you need. Uh, there is a uh, Dolby Atmos production suite is a 90 day trial i think uh, normally it costs about 300 dollars to get it but you can get it for a 90 day trial and then try it and experience it uh, you need to download that and it comes also with an iLock so you need to register with iLock to get the 90 day uh, license uh, also you've got the Dolby Atmos uh, music panel that you need uh, to use so this one is for Logic Pro um, You've got other tools, uh, I think uh, other DAW that you can use. Uh, Logic Pro has got also its uh, little uh, quirk. So I'm just going to talk about Logic Pro. So once you have downloaded it and installed everything, and for the uh, production suite, I think uh, you need to uh, to reboot. Um, then uh, what you get is you can go into Logic Pro, and I've already set up everything. But uh, what's happening is that you've got Logic Pro, that is going to connect to the uh, Dolby Atmos renderer via the way of plugins. So it comes with a default template. So you just load this template into, um, let me uh, close this object so you can see. Uh, I've prepared everything here. So it comes with a template and this template has got, uh, it's preloaded with a track. So you've got, um, um, I forgot what it is. I think it's a 7.1 uh track sorry sorry it's a 9.1 so it's a 9.1 track uh which is a standard into horizontal and then you've got object from uh, object 11 all the way to object 128 um, the first one are set up in mono and then after it's set up with a stereo so here i set up just a very simple loop that i took from the apple loop i set it up and um, i put them on my object 3 33, 34, and object 35, 36. So here I find it uh, back again here, and I've got the panel which is already um, set up. You can see in the panel that it's connected via localhost to the renderer. So what's happening here is that um, logic is limited to uh, 7.1. That's the maximum you can do in uh, surround. So that means internally it has got a maximum of eight channels that you can work with. And Dolby Atmos is uh, 128 channels. So you can't use Logic Pro um, settings to do it. So what they do is that they take the sound and then send it to the renderer and that's where the renderer is going to do the um, as a bouncing and the mastering. So that's what makes it a little bit more complicated than others. There is an announcement that uh, Logic Pro by the end of the year will come with a special audio from uh, Mac. So my hope is that they are going to increase the number of channels. If you go look at other those, I've got more than eight channel. Uh, some do I've got like up to 64 channel, uh, more than that. So that would allow to assign you know, a channel and then have uh, plugging internally to process everything. But this is the way it works. Uh, in this planning, uh, you can see you've got um, your object here. Uh, disable the elevation. Oh no, I think it's still here. But you can disable the elevation so you keep everything in uh, horizontal or leave it here. Uh, you can set up manual manually where you want um, the objects to be here. So it's a stereo. So I've got two objects, 33 and 34, for each uh, channel of uh, the stereo. Uh, but I've enabled the sequencer. What the sequencer allow you, it allow you to uh, draw on the screen where you want this object to move around. So that's interesting. Uh, you can set up also the step duration so that uh, all along this, uh, within the step, how long uh, this drawing is going to, uh, to work. Uh, you may see here a little bit, there's a little arrow that indicates the direction of the, uh, the, the movement. So you can set up that, you can make it static or you can make your object move. So that's interesting, I'm going to stop done. Uh, so I've got two of them. Uh, whoops, I disabled it. Let's bring it back and enable it. Uh, you can see that it's both are connected to local host. So that's interesting and you see a different step. So let me uh, play so we can see a little bit.
So you see it's uh, synchronized. So what you see is that these objects that are moving here are moving also in the render. And you see here the render is telling you which object is receiving some sound. And you can see the object moving in this area also, uh, exactly what you've got on the panel. So here you've got everything. Um, so that's as simple as that, how it works. Uh, the difficulty is to synchronize the two. So I didn't do everything that needs to be synchronized. Um, you've got two options. Either you've got uh, internal MIDI that you can uh, you know, use that to synchronize between the uh, Logic Pro and the renderer. Or you can use uh, an object 129 uh, with a special audio file that, you, uh, that will be sent to the renderer. All right. This renderer also, let me see, also in the preferences setup. So in your driver, you take the core audio, you use the Dolby audio bridge. So that's where the input is coming from. The uh, logic panel will send uh, to the Dolby audio bridge and the renderer will pick it up and send it to my Scarlett. So here I put external sync source, MTC. Uh, you can put LTC over audio, but I don't think it works and I haven't set it up all correctly. Uh, you have got different type of processing. You can do a speaker processing, you can do a headphone processing in stereo or binaural and uh, etc. I'm not going to go further than that. What you've got here in the renderer is that you've got monitoring. So you can use the monitoring in different ways. So um, the best one would be to have a 7.4 or 7.1.4. Uh, sorry, 7.1.4. Uh, but in my uh, room, I've got a setup 5.1. If you want to also uh, master it completely, you could go and stereo and binaural and use your headset uh, to get the complete uh, 3D rendering and then go to a proper Dolby Studio uh, to check everything is fine. Uh, or in your room, you use one of the monitoring that's available. Also, that's good for the monitoring to see a little bit how your mix is going to render in stereo 5.1, uh, maybe 7.1. Point uh, four and um, also in the minor. So you see, when I play it, I get also my uh, levels here. And if I go to my uh, interface, also you can see my levels, which are duplicated here. Everything is working fine. I got my 5.1 rendering. So let me stop because I'm not sure that uh, you can hear on top of the music. Um, uh, what's also is available here is that uh, if I go to um, Dolby Atmos uh, window, uh, I can have the room setup, which is basically uh, my speaker setup, uh, the routing of a channel where do I send uh, you know a channel uh, to my audio interface where they will be, and uh, also my monitoring. So I've got different type of monitoring. I can add some more. So I can have a 5.1. You enable which uh, speakers are. Etc. Etc. And then you you render it. So that's how you can configure it with your. Own. All right. Uh, how do you uh, record? Uh, so if you have the synchronization, it's a little bit better. Um, I'm just going to show you quickly. So what I do is that I press play. I set up my record in and out uh, with uh, with the timing. And uh, what I do is that, so if I had the synchronization, I could synchronize it and it will uh, kick in automatically. Uh, but uh, what I can do, so here is my source. I can start the recording. I can launch a play and then I will launch a play and it will record in the master for about 12 seconds. So let's do that. Launch a play. And I press play here so it will launch a recording inside the master. Okay, so it's done, it's recorded. You can stop that. No, it's in the master, so I can change from my input to master and then I can play it. So I've created um, Dolby Atmos Master with only the uh, channel that I add some input uh, that I recorded. So here was my 12 seconds. Uh, once I've done that,
then I can go to Dolby Atmos file and I can export my audio. Uh, so I can export my audio as a uh, WAV file with all the special object, uh, an IMF, IAB and an MP4. Uh, my feeling is that the MP4 is not fully Dolby Atmos, I'm not sure yet, but uh, when I look at it with FFmpeg, I just see only six channels, so is it because of my monitoring? Uh, I'm still trying to figure out all these things. So that's where I am at the moment. So here is a way uh, to take your music into Dolby Atmos, uh, do the rendering. So I hope when uh, the new version of Logic Pro that have been remote on several sites uh, comes up with special audio, then this workflow will be a little bit uh, easier for everyone. Uh, and that it will be all built in within uh, you know, visit log logic and maybe just uh, call the Dolby Atmos render. We'll see, uh, or maybe uh, you know the Dolby Atmos will be included as part of uh, of logic. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but that's how you can create an Atmos file. So I've created the file and I've tried to get them to play in Apple Music. No success so far. Uh, QuickTime was able to play the MP4. Uh, Apple Music was also able to play the MP4 because it's. Uh, uh, what's getting as an output is basically a movie uh, with just a black screen. So you could use it, bring it in Final Cut Pro, put your real image, and you've got an Atmos, uh, Atmos, Dolby Atmos movie. So I'm still trying to figure it out all this part. But here you go, I hope that helps you to understand a little bit uh, more Logic Pro with Dolby Atmos and uh, good exploration and let me know uh, how it goes and as i will learn some more i will do some more quick video so don't forget to click like subscribe and if you've got comments you know where to put them and i will answer them thank you very much everyone